Space Engine is easily the best space exploration tool available on the PC. Whether you want to explore planets, moons, star systems or galaxies, or even the entire universe, Space Engine is really where it's at. There's a whole load of beautiful things to explore here, we've seen them in the past, and you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, putting the video together, what kind of things can people find out there, and just how effective is Space Engine at doing just that? Well, the thing is, some of these places that take time to find, other places like this one here are bookmarked, so quite easy to find, but I really wanted to address a question I'm asked quite often, just how easy is it to explore in Space Engine? So here we are at a very familiar place, we're going to have 10 minutes on the clock and see what we can find in 10 minutes. No cuts, it's just straight exploration and no use of the search tool, so let's get straight to it. As I've shown in the past, Space Engine does have some pretty powerful search features. Whether you're looking for well-known stellar objects, or whether you just want to filter the galaxy by specific types of things, certain types of atmospheric worlds, specific nebula, or indeed anything else, you can do so with Space Engine, and it's not too hard. But the one thing I really enjoy doing the most is free roam exploring, and you can see that's what we're going to do right here. So straight away we've come across a nebula, this one's pretty close to Earth, so it's going to be a well-known nebula. In fact, what have we got here? It's the Orion Nebula. Right, so let's have a look, see what we can find in here. We can simply select one of the stars, uh, press the star, press F2, it'll bring up a map of what's in the star system. Now as we flick between the different stars, we will see the contents of that particular system. Select a planet, press the G key, and you will head straight there. Now this is pretty colourful, we've got the colourful backdrop of the nebula of course, and a very very blue planet. This is using the HDR camera mode, and we can switch straight over to realistic mode, and things look a little bit more NASA-esque here I think, don't they? So the key to change the camera mode is V, and I think you do need the current version of Space Engine to do this, or the latest version, which is available on Steam, the links are in the video description below. There is of course also the free version of Space Engine, which is also in the video description below, that's a slightly older version, so it is lacking some of the more recent features. Now also change the camera exposure there, you can use that by using the uh, pointy brackets, both uh, left and right, to increase or decrease your exposure, and now we're back to the HDR camera mode. Let's have a look at the moon around this planet, we might be able to uh, get a nice camera shot here with the moon and its parent object in the same shot, that always makes for some pretty interesting uh, video footage I think, it does give a nice sense of exploring as well. Just heading back to the other camera mode as well, decreasing the exposure, and uh, don't forget you can also zoom in or zoom out if you so want as well, and maybe we'll try that in just a bit, but for the moment we just want to try and orientate the camera correctly here. And right there you'll notice how the relative light changes depending on our orientation towards the planet. So let's try and get the moon in focus a little bit, there's the zoom I said, I mentioned a moment ago, it doesn't quite give us the feel of what we want, but nonetheless a pretty nice shot, maybe a little bit too much light here. Now we can go right down to the surface of the planet if we're not too, yeah, there we go, I was going to say if we're not too careful we'll crash right into the planetary surface, but not to worry, we can just move around here, or oh, could a planet, it's actually a moon, but you get the idea, it does nonetheless seem to have a bit of an atmosphere on it, doesn't it, a moon with an atmosphere, uh, fairly rare I guess, at least within our own star system, there are a few of them here, but yeah, there we go, a bit of a zoom, seeing the other planet on the horizon. I'd like to see that in real life, I think, wouldn't you? And let's get a slightly wider view of that as well. Now another really nice feature here is just how easy it is to do time lapses. We don't need to wait around, all we need to do is accelerate time, and we can accelerate it up to many thousands of factors if we want. I'm not sure how many factors we got here because I've got the interface disabled for the moment. There's a key combination to do that. Uh, on the UK keyboard, it's control at, and I'll put these key bindings in the video description in case you want to use them. 
Switching back to HDR then, time is getting on. We want to explore more than just this one nebula. Let's get a little deeper into space outside this nebula and see what else we can find. Now over in the distance there, you can see the galactic core. We can see the core itself as well as the dust clouds that are slightly obscure in it. We're going to head in that general direction. I'm not sure how far we'll get. We're not really looking for anything specific. The type of things I tend to look out for are, well, pretty colours. So things like nebulas, we can see a couple of these here. And these are volumetric, so they're pretty nice. And very nice, actually. Uh, Space Engine renders nebula very, very well. Now, it's likely that this nebula is going to be a procedural one, just like with uh, Elite Dangerous. In fact, there's only a certain amount of stars and a certain amount of nebula that are taken from uh, real-world catalogues. Uh, basically, pretty much all the known stars are included in Space Engine, but when you go outside of that sphere, the sphere of the uh, stars that we actually know and the nebula that we actually know, it, of course, comes down to procedural generation. Now, we could spend a bit of time here having a look at that particular nebula, but as we're on the clock and we've already looked at the nebula, I'd rather get moving a bit, although there's another nebula there. That star right that I clicked on here is standing out a little bit to me. It's something that just caught my eye. So pressing F2, bringing up the map of the star system. I can see the gas giant I want to go and have a look at. And look at that. The camera's already positioned in a very, very nice way, giving us a nice feel for this particular area. Now, another thing you may have noticed straight away is how the ring systems actually cast their shadow down onto the planetary surface. And if we were to accelerate time, you'd see the angle of the shadow actually move around the planet itself. Unfortunately, for the moment at least, the asteroids in the ring systems aren't rendered, but nonetheless, it's very pretty, isn't it? In a galaxy of more or less infinite possibilities, one thing that Space Engine proved to me again and again is that travel time is essentially irrelevant. The quicker you can get around the place, the more you can actually see. And in fact, there's so many things to see that you couldn't see it in an entire lifetime. In fact, I'd, I'd go as far as saying if the entire population of the planet Earth spent their entire lifetime searching Space Engine, we still wouldn't see everything that, that there is to discover. After all, there is a hundred billion galaxies in here, each of them with hundreds of billions of star systems and trillions of worlds. I'm really liking the look of this particular nebula. I'm not sure why. I think it's the contrast with the nice black filaments throughout the cloud itself. The planet itself is also quite different, isn't it? Something that well, we haven't seen really so far. Let's see what we can do here. Now, if we want, we can fly down to the surface of this planet. In fact, we will do that in a minute. Let's just get a bit of a view and a field for this. It looks like either a, a vast ocean at the top there or a polar ice cap. I wonder which. Most likely, I would have thought it would be ice. So just flicking back for a moment to the uh, real mode camera there. It looked very similar to it does in HDR. Let's go down and have a look at the uh, surface. Now you can see the, uh, the surface features actually drawing pretty fast here. And that's because of the sheer speed that we're moving at. If we were going a little bit slower, it would get a little bit of more time to render them in before we approach. So already quite a significant amount into our 10 minutes of exploration time here. But already we've seen nebula, ring gas giants, uh, planetary surfaces, some wonderful variations on colour. Uh, just look at the sky here, for example. Let's do a bit of a, a time lapse. Perhaps going a little bit too fast here, but nonetheless, let's leave that for a second and then slow it down because uh, those cloud transitions look like they would be quite nice to see. Let's get a bit of camera motion going as well, just for a moment, and then we'll uh, slow time down a bit. We've got a nice dance of the cosmos off in the distance, of course, as well.
So time to get moving again. There's not a lot of time left, but I think a minute is more than enough to find something else interesting. We travel much further away this time again into that galactic dust cloud. No, actually, on second thoughts, how about we leave the Milky Way? We've got a few seconds left. I think we can leave the Milky Way and find another galaxy. There's many of them out there. For those of you who are not familiar, and I always like to reiterate this point, I'll say it many times when using Space Engine, every single dot you can see now is actually an entire galaxy. So let's hope for something a little bit different, and yep, look at that. That's rather nice looking. We're close on the clock, but I think we've got time to find another planet. So not enough time to explore the planet, but enough time to find it. Uh, we've got not a nebula at the back, in the background there, but rather the backdrop of this local galaxy itself. Now time is still accelerated up from the previous planet. Uh, we might slow it down, have a look at the close-up planet here, but I'll put a cut there in just a minute so you can see all of that. So yeah, that should give you a feel of just how easy it is to explore in Space Engine it's very, very fast, even without the use of all the search tools or the uh, filters, you can still find many nice things. So I think here is a good area to leave the video off on. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.